Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to you guys. I am the I am Evangelist Sylvia Laird. I'm bringing forth the word all the way from Upper Canaan Missionary Baptist Church, 99 Highway 51 North in Millington, Tennessee, under my pastor Julius Hawkins. I'm bringing forth the word this morning to uh, Facebook Live and to everyone that tunes in to Upper Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. Um, the chapter I will be bringing the word from will be the book of the number of Psalms, chapter 1. The number of Psalms, chapter, chapter 1. And it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the street and in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff chaff which the wind driveth away therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish let's pray oh heavenly father oh gracious heavenly father our father lord we we just thank you lord for today because this is the day that you have made and we shall be glad and rejoice in it Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just waking us up this morning, Lord, and just starting us on our way, Lord, and giving us the, 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 the mind set to one to praise and worship in your holy and matchless name, Lord. Lord, I'm asking you this morning to let me decrease and let you increase, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and, and, and teach this word, and use this vessel, Lord, and bring forth your word, Lord, not my will, but as thou will, let your word Go forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your word be for reproof and let your word be for instruction. Let your word be for deliverance. Let your word be for whatever it needs to be for in, in, in somebody's life today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we be careful to give you all the glory and honor and praises of the fruit of our lips. He that have ears, let them hear what thus said the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now we made it through 2020 and enter into 2021. And by the grace of God, the whole world went through a transitional change that interrupted our whole lives. It came without a warning. You couldn't see it. The pandemic has changed our lives in the way we work, in the way we learn our schools, our families, our jobs, our health care, our minds, our social lives, our churches, and our homes. I stopped by the, today to tell you, even in the midst of all the pandemic or the COVID-19, you can still have a happy and blessed life. God is still in control. He is the creator of all things. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the great I am. He is the I am that I am God. And you can be happy and blessed in the midst of all of our circumstances in 2021. Just by choosing the right way to travel in this world. I want to talk about this morning on the subject, which way are you traveling? There are only two ways. The godly way and the ungodly way. I want you to see that the life what I want you to see that life really only gives you two directions, two destinations, and two decisions. 
I want you to see that while life often appears hard and filled with difficult, so, difficulty choices, it really boils down to two choices. Let me share then those choices with you today. This psalm identifies the way of the godly and the way of the ungodly. It tells of their destinations only with a positive benefit. For those who choose the right choice, which is Jesus Christ, the godly way. Which way are you traveling? God wants to know today, or it is just for you to meditate on for your own self, that which way am I traveling? Am I, am I traveling the godly way, which is righteous, or am I traveling the ungodly way, which is part of the word, the sinner way? Now, in verse 1, it just tells you, this is by Psalms chapter 1. This is a wisdom psalm. It is, uh, we don't know if, if David wrote this psalm, but this is a wisdom psalm. And it tells you this right here. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the godly, ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seats of the scornful. Now, blessed, now let's look at that word and it says, blessed. Blessed, it means happy or it means a righteous or uh, 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 he's talking about a blessed man here. Um, he, he's talking about a happy man here. He's talking about a righteous man that walk, that, that, that is that, that walks, that, that not walk, that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, when he said righteous now, righteous and blessed is the content of the life of a man. Or a woman who is right with God. Because we're we talking about a righteous man, a, a blessed man, a happy man. Now, if you, you want to be right with God, you got to be righteous. You want to be straight with God, you got to be a righteous man that living a righteous life. Now, it says, it started out telling you what a godly man does not do. Now, why would... This passage started out saying what a righteous or a blessed man or a happy man uh, does not do. Now, we look at this situation here, and we, we, it tells us this right here, that we live in a fallen world and are surrounded by a very dangerous thing because we know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy us. And notice he doesn't say that this man does not do these bad things or he's just saying that to stay away from them. And let's look at what it tells now. Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That's saying do not take advice from, from the evil advice. Do not listen to the evil advices or do not live like the sinners or do not join in those who make fun of God or make fun of God people. Just say mark God. Now, let's look at this thing right here. What is the meaning of ungodly? Ungodly is those who have no interest in God. They have no interest in his son. They have no interest in the Holy Spirit. Now, a sinner is those who are unrepentant and rebellious. They do, and they, they only do things that what is pleasing to the flesh. Now, we look at the, the scum for means a, a, a person that's bitter, the person that's always negative, always got something negative to say about everyone. Now, we, we, we got to look at this thing a little closer that, you know, that blessed is a man, righteous man, a happy man. We want that kind of life. And, and, and God just didn't want to know which way are we traveling? Which way are we, which way are we traveling? Are we traveling the Godly way or are we traveling the ungodly way? Being blessed and living by grace is the opposite of living a wick, with the wicked counsel. We, we, we got to understand that good and evil, you cannot mix. Because the, the result of that, it will not work. If you listen to this, this, this analogy that I, came, that I found, it says, when you make a cake, and requires two eggs. One of the eggs is rotten. Putting just a single rotten egg into the cake mix ruins the entire cake. So you cannot walk 
in the counsel of the ungodly. And you cannot stand in the way of sinners or do not live like the sinners or do not hang out with the sinners or do not have a, any kind of association with the sinners or do the things or hang out in the place that they hang out because you will not be blessed. You will not be blessed if you listen to ungodly advice from people that's wicked in the world because that's not of God. God said, he said, for I, he said, because I am holy, you have to be holy. You have to be righteous with God. Now, now let's look into the Bible. And I came up, I, I looked at uh, the, this scripture in 2 Chronicles, the 20th verse, the 20th chapter and the 12th verse. And it was talking about the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat. It said he was a very good king, and, and there was an incident, once incident. It said that three different kings came against Jehoshaphat, and he had no power to fight against them. In his desperation, he sought the Lord and uttered one of the most verses from the Bible in times of trouble. He did, in, in his Second Chronicles 20 and in the, in the 12th verse, and it reads, do not, We do not know what to do, but our eyes are fixed on you. In verse 15, it said, he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours, but it's God. And as, as per the word of God, the very next day, Jehoshaphat received a deliverance from his enemies without fighting the battle. You see, Jehoshaphat stood in the way of the sinners. You got to understand that in the midst of Jehoshaphat being as a good man that he is, he, 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 he started to have association with a sinner, which is Ahab. Because if we read on, we said that he, he went ahead and married his son to Ahab's daughter. And Ahab's daughter, is, uh, mother is, Je is Jezebel, and the father is Ahab. And then, you know, when, when he fell into temptation to accept the invitation of Ahab to join him in, in his battle, he said first that Jehoshaphat's life, that in his first time, he's like, he ain't never been through uh, uh, trouble and trials and tribulation until he started associating with the sinner. And in, in 2 Chronicles 19, 2, it tells us, King Jehoshaphat, do you help a sinner or act friendly towards at one hated of God of the Lord, the Lord condemned him for this. If you know someone that is a sinner, you have to pray for them. Intercede them for their souls. But don't bond with them. Because if we bond with them, they battle becomes our battle. Because we stand in their ways, we end up fighting the battles. And finally, our own life will become a battle zone. The Lord promised to give us peace. Let us not lose that peace. Let us not stand in the way of the sinners. Do not sit in the seat of the scoffer and don't join in with those who make fun of God. I said before that a scornful person is a bitter person. It's a person that's negative. It's a person that, that always have something negative to say about everybody. They're not intelligent. They just plain negative. Don't sit around people that have been scorned or rejected because they are very dangerous. And the prime example is Saul. He was rejected. And he wanted to kill David. Scorn for people. They are full of scorn and bitter. Bitterness will spoil your chances of getting blessed. If you'll be around them, you will adopt the same mentality. The same mentality as sinners, the same mentality as an ungodly person giving bad advice because just because your association around them, that's what he tells us. Do not sit in the sit in the, the council or do not walk in the council of the ungodly and do not stand in, in, in the way of the sinners and, and do not sit in the seat of the of, of the scornful. A bitter person of being negative, you have to change. You want to be blessed. You have to change. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 tells us, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. How does this happen? Bit by bit and over time. 
This will lead to destruction if you walk in the counsel of ungodly, if you stand in the way of sinners, and if you sit in the seat of scoffers. Time over time, as you keep on associating with these people that the word of God said do not associate with or do not bond with, over time, your mentality will be, be just like theirs, part of this world. Matthew 7, 13 tells us the righteous man is not afraid to take a less travel road because he knows it leads to blessing, happiness, and eternal life. Enter by a narrow gate, for the wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Let's look at this broad way or this ungodly way because they say the broad means that it's spacious. You can take anything with you. Anything goes on this road. That's why people choose this road because it's the easy way, so we think. Let's look at things that we can take with you and then see, can, do you know, have, have you done this or, or have you, do you know of this? You can do anything you like. You heard the, the young person tell you, the mother said, Mama, you just let me live my life. You want to live your life in this world. It tells you you can carry all the baggage of your sins with you on this, this ungodly way or this broad way. You can live like you want to live. You can call all the shots and make all the rules. Uh, don't it sound so good to you? Because that's the, how the enemy gets you, get you, get you to, to kill you and destroy you. It tells you you can be as religious as you like or irreligious as you like. We got to understand not only does the sinners is the one that's going this road, it's some of us people that's in church that we call ourselves Christians are headed down this road, are on this road right as we speak. You can go to church, pray, and even read your Bible. You can do as much as much or little as you please. It doesn't matter what the Broadway includes all religions, the Islam to the atheism. You can confess Jesus if you like. So I told you that this role is for anybody that wants to go down, but this is your choice. And it says you can make your own decisions. You, have not, you don't have to answer to anyone. You can live life as you please. Go where you will, do what you will, and be what you will. If your life is what you call, you can call all the sh shots. And it's an easy way to live because there is no one to please but self. That is what the ungodly way is all about. It's about self. But the pleasure seekers who fails to mention of those who travel this road, there are a couple of things you need to know before you decide to live out the rest of, the tr of your life traveling the ungodly way. Understand this. You aren't really in control. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 tells us, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us who lived among them at one time. Gratifying and craving of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest. We were by nature deserving of wrath. If you choose to travel this ungodly way, sin, sin always brings pain and sorrow. Galatians 6 and 7 tells us, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Proverbs 13, 15 tells us, Good judgment wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destructions. But there is another alternative that God has, be has better for us. If we choose the righteous way, he offers us peace. He offers us joy, assurance of salvation, and a promise to heaven. He offers all of that. These variety of things which the Lord gives those who follow him. But you'll, you'll never find a single one of them if you're traveling the ungodly way. 
There is another way. It says the narrow way, which is the righteous way, which is the godly way. See, some of us just choose the broad way because it's wide open and, it e and it's easy. But you got to understand the narrow way has some restrictions. It is constricted. Number one, you, you, you can't take all your sins. You can't take all your sins with you. If you try, you will find that there isn't room for you and them. Then them means your sins. Righteous, you can't, you can't be right when you're still living in sin. So you can't take it with you on this righteous road to salvation, to, to the, the, your, your promise to heaven. You can't take this with you. You must choose to give up your rights. Your life is not your own anymore. It belongs to Jesus. You are Jesus. God owns you. He is your Savior. He is everything to you. He should be everything to you. You can no longer do as you please. Because, but you must do thing, those things that is pleasing to the Lord. You cannot make the rules. But you, ex you are expected to follow God's rules, God to man, obey the word of God. That's what it's telling. We are expected to, to follow the obedience of the word of God. If we want to stay on this road, the righteous place their life around the will of God. That doesn't mean a righteous person never sin or screws up. Yes, we do. Right, a righteous person is defined by the path that they're walking. Take, for instance, David. He messed up. They didn't call him. They didn't think of him as a wicked king. They said he, he did make terrible decisions. Remember him? He committed adultery. And then also he put Bathsheba's husband on the front of the line to, to, to hide his, to, to be killed, to hide his infidelity or his adultery a duration with Bathsheba. But God, but God is a forgiving God. David confessed, David repented, and once again, his heart was steadfast to walk in the way of God. That's why David was called a man after God's own heart. The righteous are those who never stumble off the path of godliness or the path of righteousness. The righteous are those who, when they stumble off the path, they let God help them find their way back. The only way to the path of righteousness is by following the path where God sets out before us. That person will be blessed. However, living for the Lord brings certain benefits that cannot be obtained by any other means. Notice some facts about living the narrow way or the godly way. It honors God. 1 Peter 1, 16 tells us, For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. I said before, God is a holy God. You can't bring everything up to God and expect him to be on your side and, and want him to bless you real good just because you do good things. But you got to be holy. You got to be righteous. And secondly, say it brings his blessings and power into your life. Second Chronicles 7, 14 tells us, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We got to be, we got to humble ourselves. We got to pray and seek God's face and his word. And we got to turn from the wicked way. That's why he said, do not. This is a command from God. This is a command. Do not. Do not walk in the way of the counsel of the ungodly. Do not stand in the way of the sinners. Do not sit in the seat of the scoffer. Don't be negative. Don't put away all the things because you got to say the old self has got to die. You are, we want to be blessed. You want to be righteous. Your old self has got to die to follow Jesus on this righteous road. It also, it, it offers a far better life from every, every perspective. Hebrews eleven twenty five 25 tells us he chose to be mistreated. 
along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Galatians 6, 8 and 9 tells us, whoever sow, sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will re reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Nobody ever said this life living for the Lord was easy. But it is the only way to honor the Lord and to be his disciple. It's a life lived in surrendering. You got to surrender all to him. Your old life has got to die. It's a life of devotion. Devote, devotion to him. Have a relationship with God. It's a life of dedication and a life of obedience to our Heavenly Father, God. It is a life that, that you will be blessed. Sounds tough. But it's worth it. If you, are, if you are to be blessed, it's not easy to stay away from bad company. But we must have an appetite for God's word. It tells us, goes on and says, delight and meditate on the word of God day and night. The word of God is the outline of God's divine plans and purpose for our life. To live a Christ life, we got to be all in all. For God, by reading and learning and digesting and meditating on the Lord, on the word of God day and night. When we do this, we become part, we, we, when we do this, we don't become part of this world. We are heading down the righteous way. We have to let the word of God change us. And the only way we can change is to renew our minds. Romans 12, 2 tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And your action says, how can I be transformed? Transformation starts on the inside. It's a man thing. You got to understand, it's easy to change our outside, but it, then it's easy to change on the inside. You can change your hair. You can change your clothes. You can change the way you walk. You can change your shoes. But if you haven't changed your mind or your heart, you haven't changed. You have to change on the inside. You will become wherever you read. Your mind will become wherever you read. Listen to this. When you got saved, you got to understand your man didn't get saved. Your mind still has the memories and the affection and the cravings of your old ways. Your mind has to be renewed by meditating on the word of God day and night. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Renewing of your mind. It starts in your mind, in your mentality, in your thinking and in the way you process stuff. We have to choose which way are we traveling. Are we traveling the godly way? Are we traveling the ungodly way? We have to change we have to get into the word of God. So we have to let the word of God change, changes you. The word of God will develop you up. The word of God will build you up. The word of God will train you up. When we delight ourselves in God and his word daily, you will receive the desires of your hearts. You will be wise. You will be truly blessed in the Lord. You will be like a tree securely planted by the rivers of water, living a living a life-giving one, living a life that's pleasing to God, yielding fruits, much fruits in its season to be glory by the, to the glory of God. For the scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable of doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. We are to study and show ourselves approved. Get into the word of, of the Lord daily. Let the word of God abide in us. Let the word of God change us. Let's feed and feast off the word of God faithfully with thanksgiving daily. We are to be continually nourished by the 
milk and the meat of the written word of God so that we may grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ who is crucified, who resurrected, who ascended, living word of God, who is seated on the right hand of the Father. The more we take time to spend in the word of God or spend with the Lord, the, 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 our fellowship with the Lord will be closer. We become closer and we have a relationship with, with God. We will continually be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We need to be planted so deeply in the word of God that we can't be shaken by the temptation of this world. That's what it said that we got to be rooted in the word of God. We plan about it, that a tree be into the word. We got to get more of the word of God in us. We got to know who we are. We belong to God. God chose us. We didn't choose him. We are his royal priesthood. We are his people. So therefore, we will be we will be a tree that produces fruit when it when we when it should and his leaves and have leaves that never fall or wither. Everything that we do, we will be successful. We will prosper. That we got to be rooted in the word of God. That we would not be shaken by our circumstances. We would not be shaken by whatever that goes on in our life. We will stand firm and have a good courage in the word of God. And be courageous and overcome everything that come up against us. That we said we got to be planted by the tree of rivers of water. The river of water is Jesus Christ. Jesus. Then he talks about there is a time for every season. We got to understand, we can't rush the season. It's in due time. He will sustain you in the word of God. He will sustain you so much that you will not wither that's what it said his trees will not did your leaves will now never wither never fall this is what it means that you will not wither when season of difficulty and drop drought comes to test your faith you will have things that comes upon you to test your face you will lose your job you might even lose your wife you might even lose your husband but whatever the circumstance is is telling you to stand firm in the word of god don't be shaken don't let the enemy shake you up stand firm Say, you are an overcome. Don't let it overwhelm you by the enemies that come to kill, steal, and destroy you. You are covered in the honor of the light of Jesus Christ. And you and not be settled by problems and pain. We're going to go through, I said before, we're going to go through trials and tribulation. But that is to anchor us to be the rock of our salvation. Anchors us in the word of Jesus Christ. And the Jesus Christ will protect us by putting his loving arms all around us. Or his hedge of protection around us from the wiles of the enemy and keeping us. The Father promised that he tells us that hey, whatever we do, because we are righteous, because we follow the righteous way, that we will prosper. God is working in each of our lives from an eternal Prospect and the man who prospers in everything that he carries out is the who is the one who takes up his cross and follow Jesus Christ. That means we got to be all in all with God. We got to delight ourselves in the Word of God, meditating day and night, and be so rooted up in 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 His Word that we are planted. In his word, like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and that's Jesus Christ. And we shall not be shaken by whatever the enemy throws up against us. Because the enemy, his job is to kill, steal, and destroy us. But we, our job is to stay, stay strong in the word of God. May we be like tree, planted and grows prosper and produces the precious fruit of righteousness receiving god's never failing supply of the nourishment and limitless refreshments from his streams of living water which is jesus christ living the truth practicing the truth in the name of jesus hallelujah finally 
Let's look at this outcome. It tells us in Psalms 1, the outcome of the godly and the outcome of the unrighteous. Then it says, it said, the wicked are not so, but, as, but are like chaff that drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of righteousness. It says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The outcome of the wicked, the wicked would, won't stand in the judgment or be included in the congregation of the righteousness. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 12, 14. It tells us that God will bring every deed, good or bad, secret or public, into judgment. It tells us that the way of the wicked will perish. Destructions will be their end. From a worldly perspective, we might look at the wicked right now. They may think they're, they're living the best life. But I beg the difference. They will be separated from God and his people. Their end is very, very sad, and they will perish. That's their end. Now, the outcome of the righteous. Not only does the righteous live in as a tree planted by the streams of, the, of water, a picture of Eden and life as it should be, we are also told in verse 6 that the Lord knows the way of the righteous. This knowing isn't the knowledge that knows God knows all things. This is special knowing implies affection and approval of his righteous people, the blessed man, the happy man. The outcome is not destruction, but rather a welcoming by God and a preserving of their life. John 10, 14, 27 tells us, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father and I lay down my life for, my, for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. It was for this that Jesus laid down his life. Romans 5, 8 tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus was tortured and beaten only to be hung on a cross, laying down his life for the wicked, the sinner, the scoffer. He died the death that each of us deserved. Which way are you traveling today? The godly way or the ungodly way? And it's clear that it tells you that the godly way you will receive eternal life. You, your destination will be the gate of heaven. The gates to heaven and also your decision will be eternal life. Now, if you're traveling the road of the ungodly and you want to come to Jesus for salvation, then you are going to have to be willing to turn back, turn your back on the sins and the junk of this world. You are, fool, you are not fooling yourself if you think you can hang on to this world in one hand and Jesus on the other. The only way to Jesus is the, is the righteous way, the godly way, the gate to heaven. And it requires us to lay down everything and cling simply to Jesus and him alone. The songwriter says, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to that cross I cling. What are you holding on today that is keeping you away from the Lord Jesus Christ? Whatever it is, it isn't worth the price you will pay if you keep it. Throw it down and come to Jesus for salvation. I was lost once, I was lost, but now I was found. I was blind, but now I see. God, you say, a rest like me. That we all been there. We all was headed on the ungodly road, but God saved us. What about you? Where, where's your road traveling or taking you to? Have you thought it over? Where will you end up when you leave this world? What will be 
Your destination, will it be heaven or will it be hell? Where will you end up? If you want to go to heaven, then look to Jesus and enter into salvation through faith in him. Be saved today. Be sure today. Don't, it, don't wait no longer. Life is too short and eternity is long. Today is your day. Will you come to him and get it settled forever today? Will you come to Jesus today? Salvation has nothing to do with coming to the altar or repeating a prayer. Or salvation has nothing to do with being baptized and joining a church. Salvation has nothing to do with changing your life or, or turning over a new leaf. Salvation has nothing to do with hearing the truth. I mean, salvation has everything to do with hearing the truth, believing the truth, living the truth, which is Jesus Christ for the glory of, the, of our Lord of our God. He wants to know which way are you traveling. I dare you today to make a decision. Make the right decision. If you want to be saved today, repeat this prayer. Hallelujah. Which way are you traveling? Each of us has got to Look over our life and, and, and examine ourselves and see are we traveling the, the righteous way, the godly way to salvation, to, to heaven, to eternal life. Because God's kingdom is coming. We, we be praying for things to get right on earth, but we got to understand everything had to manifest within the word of God has already told us. Everything has a time and place. It is our time to get it right with God. He wants to know which way are you traveling? Are you for me or are you not for me? He wants to know, are we for him? Are we delighting ourselves in him? Are we having devotion him with him? Are we getting into the word of God? He's telling I got your blessings held up right now. Because I'm waiting on you. I never left you. He's always telling you where I never leave you nor forsake you. But we left God because we want to go on the easy way. We want to do our way. We want to please our flesh. Because we know the righteous way it has some restrictions. We got to do it God's way. We got to let God lead and guide us into salvation, into everlasting life. Because the kingdom of God is coming back. The coming of the Lord, he's coming. And we got to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We got to keep on fixating our eyes on Jesus Christ in everything that we do. Get into this word daily. It's not a, a one thing time to read the word of God. You'll never know him. He wants you to get to know him because he wants to get to know you. Repeat this prayer of you have not been saved, just repeat this prayer. Dear God, I want to be part of your family. You said in your word that if I acknowledge that you raised Jesus from the dead and that I accept him as my Lord and Savior, I will be saved. So God, now I say that I believe you raised Jesus from the dead and, he, and, and that he lives and he's alive and well. And now I want him to be my personal Lord and Savior. I accept him as my Savior right now. In the name of Jesus, I am saved. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And he rose three days later with all power in his hand. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want Jesus to be my Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. For forgiving me, for saving me, for giving me eternal life with you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. He wants to know. God wants to know. Which way are you traveling? The godly way or the ungodly way? Well, I tell you. I want to be righteous with God. I want to be right with God. I want a blessed life. 
I want to be prosper. I want to be planted so deep and rooted in the word of God. In the name of Jesus. That I won't be shaken by whatever comes my way. This pandemic, I won't be shaken because if I transition over, I know what's at the end of my destination. And that's eternal life. And that's what you all need to know for yourself. You got to know for yourself. Am I traveling the right way? Am I doing the things that God wants me to do? I know it's a restricted way. I know it's a hard way. But it's worth it. It's worth it. I dare you. To give Jesus a try. I dare you to give this road a try, the godly, the righteous way. I dare you to get into the word of God and let him transform you into what he wants you to be. You will prosper wherever you go. You will be blessed. A blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. You will be blessed. Thank you. Thank you for listening today. And be blessed, mask up, and, and, and go in peace and have joy in the name of Jesus. Have a great week. Amen.